on the command fire. So failure is doctor. This guy's on PCP. He's not stopping. He's got two knives in his hand. Uh, he's got three teeth. Uh, he's rip shredded. I have no idea. I, he's on the homeless diet or something. And the dude is just a monster. Uh, he's coming at you screaming about baloney whales. You have no idea what he's saying. He's clearly a deadly threat. Um, your shots do nothing. So it's going to be two shots to the stomach and one to the head. All right? All right. So, shooter stand by. Target. Nice. Now, keep your pistol out there. Don't don't finish that shot. All right, good. Nice. So I want you to... So, you just put the round in his head. You have no time to evaluate what's going on. You may have friends, you may have whatever. You want to keep it up. Look, check your check your six. Keep the pistol up. You're still in the fight. Give yourself at least five seconds to figure out whether or not you're still in a fight. Um, so, all right, go ahead and holster. All right. So I'm gonna teach you a drill called search and assess. It's a really good habit to get into. Um, uh, so after you fire, I want you to check left, check right, bring the pistol into, into um, forward retention. So I want you to point the pistol straight out of your chest from your chest, and I want you to check 360. I want you to check all the way around. I want you to move the cover to a safe zone. I want you to go through all the steps. So you're gonna fire Two rounds from retention. You're gonna put one in the head. You're gonna bring the pistol in. You're gonna check the area, look for friends, do a quick check in front of you, and then I want you to start scanning 360 around you, and I want you to start moving to cover. So I want you to just start moving over to my truck. I want you to have that mindset. I was in a, I was in a fight, there might be other people. What's the next step? The next step is to check, get the tunnel vision off, and move to cover, move to safety. Now you don't want to leave the scene, you are going to have some legal issues you got to deal with in a couple minutes here, but for the next 30 seconds you may or may not be in a continuous gunfight, so start moving to a safer area if you can. Okay, so I want you to have that mentality, I want you to train it, try that. So shooter stand by, target! Okay, check your area, scan, start moving to cover, have that mentality. Alright, that is a perfect example of what you should be doing after an encounter, and that's how fast it is. Three rounds is, na is national average for a firefight. It happens in about three seconds. Identifying that it's a deadly threat is one of the hardest parts um, when it comes to it. Um, but, but, but you have the skill set to apply, and you have the skill set to move away and, and stay safe in that situation. So, so that's that's exactly how you want to train that. I want to play that. Engage the target. Start scanning. Move away. Find cover. So that's it, kind of oversimplified. I mean, I can start talking about what cover is and concealment and, and get more into it. If you take my class, I will definitely get into it. Um, but, um, so, that there's that. Ass. <laughs> What's that? That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> you want to try again? Do you have more rounds? Yeah. All right, try it again. So you definitely want to keep it in a safe direction. So I want to talk about oh, controlled ready. So, this has a name, I forgot. All right, so what I want you to do, after... So after you presented, you did a headshot. If you want to keep this thing downrange but in control, a really good place is squared up to your chest, pointed straight out, just like this. You can shoot from this position, and this is a good way to keep retention, keep control. You can easily point it down to the dirt to keep things safe, um, and and present from here. I really like this system. Also, if there's somebody on you, you lift your elbows or. It's also, nah, I can get into more and more and more detail and technique, but but for at where we're at, just starting to learn how to shoot from retention, you don't need to know how to clear with your elbows when you look over. But it's a good idea to do that because it, it pushes people. If there's anybody on you, you just shot somebody. If you're in a crowded place, there might be somebody panicking, running past you, not trying to attack you. They might be a good person. They might just be very scared, and they might run in you into you in a way that if you have your elbow, like if, if you just turn like this, they might hit you and you might shoot, right? So you take your finger off the trigger and you have your elbow up and you're blocking and they're gonna hit your elbow and, and, you're, and they're just gonna bounce off you. You have more clearance, you can clear yourself by looking behind you with your elbows. And present to, uh, <clears throat> There's a lot of things going on there that, I, that to articulate will take a lot of time, but you kind of get the ideas by kind of watching the process. So, you know, boom, boom. Boom, bring it in, I'm checking, check my 
360, start moving the cover, identify that my truck is cover, look for that engine block, those tire wells, there's most steel. It, bullets will go straight through cars. So this area here, this is just concealment. If I'm behind this, the, 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 um, if somebody's shooting at me from over here, across this section of my car, this is just empty space, a little bit of sheet metal, and some, um, some, uh, I mean, some, some glass or whatever, right? So the bullets will go right through that. The idea is I have an engine block I want to use. These wheel wells and these brake pads are pretty good cover. Um, so I want to look for cover as much as I can. Also, with, with, with vehicles, you don't want to hug vehicles. So if the threat's going to come from this way, I may want to stay three or four feet away from the vehicle to make space. Um, this is going to be a lot easier to shoot over the vehicle, move around the vehicle. It also... It also utilizes the the cover better. So, at, like it's like when you see something far away and it looks really small, and as you get closer, it gets bigger. So, my if my engine block's here and I have a threat out there, right? So, if I'm back here to my engine block, I look small, which means my profile behind my engine block is 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 smaller. So I can protect more of myself behind my engine block the farther away I am from it. As I come close, my engine block sees me bigger, my opponent sees me bigger, and so now I'm standing taller than my engine block. Um, so if you back up, you'll watch the horizon rise from, my, from, from the edge of my truck. If you just stand normal and just back up, the horizon will rise. As it's rising, that, that means you're getting more protection. You can kind of see that. So staying back a little bit, um, so it gets, gives them, it's harder for them to shoot through the car at you. And also it's good knowledge to know that you can shoot through cars. So if somebody's hiding behind the front of end of a car, oh, I'm right here, I'm gonna shoot at you. Well, then you can just light them up through the tail, the light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming I'm teaching only good guys, but what are you gonna do? You're gonna take one of your classes, it's really fun. What's that? I gotta take one of your classes. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, my personal protection inside the home is a good place. You'll, you'll get a little bit more technical about why and how. Um, so I'll, I'll teach you a lot of the same skills I'm teaching you now, but but you'll learn a little bit more of the psychology behind it and the application. Like I just started talking about checking and clearing and and identify. Like um, so, um, mostly we've done a lot of shooting stuff, but also we can do like some more tactical applications and. And in more advanced techniques like shooting out of the back of a truck or or how to how to do that and how to shoot out of vehicles. How how windshields affect bullets, like it changes the angle. And and the only way you really learn how much it changes the angle is when you shoot through a windshield. So you kinda <laughs> need some windshields to shoot. And, and uh, get to get to play uh yeah, so that's good time, that's good training. Oh yeah, you wanna do the failure stock show? Do you load it up? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it.